We're now going to set up our end game situation. Basically what happens when the player finishes one way or another. Now this is going to be a very generic system, meaning that we can pass into it the screen that we want to show up. Basically, did the player win? Did they lose? If so, how did they lose? Did they lose because they ran out of lives and the game is just over? Did they lose because time's up and we need to tell them so? So, like I said, be a very generic, kind of an open system. So, let's jump into Kismet. I'm going to grab our player lives and we'll get those out of the way. Now, let's start keeping our Kismet sequence tidy right off the bat. With the player lives selected, let's go ahead and just tap the C key. We'll put this inside a comment called global variables. Now this is going to end up being pretty big by the time we're finished, so let's just make sure that's well out of the way. I'll go ahead and grab the rest of our sequences, tap C, and let's put this in camera setup, like so, and then we'll probably need to expand that as well, but it's a start. Okay, so our next step is going to be to create a brand new sequence, so make sure that you have nothing selected, then right click and come down to create new sequence, you should see zero objects next to that. And we're going to call this end game. Now as soon as this is created, go ahead and double click it to open it. Then we'll right click, go to new event, and choose sequence activated. So this is what happens when we fire an input into this new sequence we've made. We're going to name this input with the input label. Just call it end. Now, what I want to do, first thing, is reattach the camera back to the player. There are going to be a few circumstances in which we're going to give control of the camera off to some other camera in our scene. And in case that happens when the player dies, we need to be able to say, hey, go look back at the player because the game is now over. So let's jump up a sequence. So down here in the sequences panel, I'll click on our main sequence. I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and drag a box around just the attached to actor and the set camera target as well as their two variables. Hit Control C, jump back into end game, and hit Control V. So now we've just redone our little attachment to make sure that we are now focused right back on the player. Now next we're going to toggle cinematic mode. So new action, toggle, cinematic mode. This just takes away control from the player in case they need it for some reason. That way they're not spinning the view in frustration or anything like that. They just don't have any more control. We'll go ahead and plug this into disabled. Actually, excuse, excuse me. Let's plug this into enable because we want to enable cinematic mode, not disable their inputs, which is going to happen as we enable. All right. Now we need to plug the player variable in here. So I'm going to grab player zero. And we could just tap right into that. If you want to make another copy of that, that's okay. Now, I will try as often as I can to make sure that wires between variables and sequences don't get too overlapped, but it's bound to happen sooner or later. Okay, next we need to open up some sort of a UI scene to tell them that the game is over, be it good or bad. So we'll right-click, go to New Action, come down to UI Scenes, and choose Open Scene. But what scene will we open? That's actually going to change depending on what's going on. Uh, if they run out of lives, we're just going to say, hey, the game is over. If they run out of time, we're going to tell them that time's up. If they win, we're going to tell them that they were victorious and they should be showered with money and cars and things. Well, probably not all that. All right, so now from underneath our open scene, we're going to add a new external variable. So let's right-click, grab new variable, external variable, and we'll plug that into our scene. Now, if we select the external variable, we should give this a name other than default var. So grab the variable label, and we're going to call this scene. Now, here's the cool thing. If I jump back out to our main sequence, you can see what this did. Our little event for when the sequence is activated gives us an input called end, and now we have a variable input labeled scene. So that's all we're setting up. Okay, now we're going to put in a delay. So right-click new action, miscellaneous, and grab a delay. And let's go ahead and set the duration of the delay to two. And upon success of our UI scene opening, we'll go ahead and start up the delay, which is just gonna hold us for two seconds. Now, what's gonna happen when that delay is over? We're gonna fire up a matinee that essentially is just gonna fade the camera. So let's create a new matinee. Now, we need to go select our camera actor, but first I'm gonna take our finish from the delay, plug that into play. Let's close out a matinee for just a moment. 
and we need to make sure we have our camera selected. Now this is exactly why I pulled this up above the level, made it real easy to see and select. Then jump back into our sequence, open up matinee, and I'll go ahead and make this nice and big. Now I'm just going to right click here inside the group track list, and we'll add an empty group, which I'll just call camera. Now, as soon as I've done that, we're not going to do anything to that group. It's really just there so we can use the camera. I'm going to right-click and create a new director group. And then for our director group, right at the director track, the first thing we're going to do is just drop down a camera I'm just by pressing Enter, and it'll ask Cut to Group. Well, that'll be the camera group we just created. There we go. So now we've put the player's focus through that camera just to be sure. We have to do this in order to get the fade to work. All right, now let's go back to the director group, right click, add a fade track. And here at the very beginning of our animation, we're going to press enter. Now, this, the fade on this is going to be set to zero. If you'd like to confirm, you can just right click, set value, and you'll notice the value is set to zero. That means we're starting off with zero fade. If you're not used to using fade tracks, you might get it in your head that, you know, fade should be, it should go from one to zero because after working with things like materials and colors and whatnot, you've probably begun to associate one with white and zero with black, but fade actually works in reverse. What you're, what you're doing is literally controlling the amount of fade. So a fade of zero means you can see, a fade of one means you can't. All right, so let's come over here to three seconds, and we'll drop down another key here on our fade track. Right click. Now let me set the value to 1, and just to make sure, I'm going to right click and set the time and make sure that's at 3 seconds. Now we want to make sure that our matinee is only 3 seconds long, so I'm going to come down here to the red flag and drag this off to the left, and I'm going to zoom in really close and make sure this goes right over to 3 seconds. And there we go. So now we've got our 3 seconds long fade out. Now we're done with the matinee now, so we can go ahead and close out of there. All we've done is taken the camera and faded it to black. So they're going to see the UI pop up, then everything's going to fade to black. Now the only thing we're going to do now is send them back to kind of the beginning menu. So this is like an entire progression of what's going to happen uh, when the game's over. So we'll right click, go to new action, miscellaneous, open up a console command. So when the matinee is completed, we'll fire off a console command. Now let's go into our commands, we'll expand, grab our first command, and we're going to say open space ut front end, which is an actual level, it's kind of like the opening uh, the opening level, opening menu, is, I should say, for when you first fire up ut. Okay, so now back into the main level sequence, we're going to create a new object variable that we're going to name end game menu. So let's come over here to our global variables. Right click, new variable, object, object. And we're going to call this, come over to the var name. Make sure you don't change the object value. You want to change the object, uh, the var name, not object value. Excuse me. Make sure that everybody understands that. So let's take var name and we're going to set this to end game menu. And you'll know you get it right because the name should be in red underneath the variable. Now, let's come all the way over here, and I'm going to pull this actually just above our camera setup. We're going to trigger an event to make this happen, so let's right-click, come to Event, and grab a Remote Event. And a, re a Remote Event essentially means that later on we can have many other Activate Remote Event actions call on this, which, as I mentioned earlier, can mean that the game can end for a lot of different reasons. So let's give this a name, and we'll call this end game under our event name, and we can just plug end game in like so. Now, what scene are we going to pass into this? Well, we need to create a named variable to do this, so we'll right click, come down to new variable, and choose a named variable. Find var name, and remember over here we use end game menu. So let's grab end game menu and we'll plug this into the scene now what this means is we're, we're going to have to take this end game menu named variable 
and set this to equal some UI scene that we're going to feed to the player, something to tell them why the game is over. Then the next thing we do after we set that variable will be to call the remote event end game, which will end our game displaying that UI to the player. But we're going to set that up in the next video. For now, go ahead and save your scene, and then we will continue. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.